Hello everyone and welcome to our Tech Tuesday tutorial number 52. Today we show you how easy it is to make flyers and posters with Google Slides. Well, welcome back. It's been a long time. I've missed a couple of uh, Tech Tuesdays. I do apologize for that. We've been pretty busy this summer and we've also been involved with a couple of conferences. But enough excuses. Let's get on with the show. So in order to start a flyer, you first need to just make a slides presentation. A single slide will be fine. Give it a name like Demo Flyer, and that's fine. And so the first thing is to resize it. You can go to File and go to Page Setup, and instead of widescreen or standard, choose Custom. There you can put in 8.5 by 11, which is your standard size for paper. Hit OK. Then you want to remove all of the actual elements that are there, so you just have a blank sheet of paper to work with. Now, it would help if you had some images already gathered ahead of time, but you don't have to. One of the things I did here was search for a background and some paint splatter and a cupcake. It is important to note that these are PNG files, which means they have a transparent background or they have the cap capability of having a transparent background. These happen to have it. There are a couple of ways you can find this, but I'll just show you the basic Google image search option where you might go in here and type in uh, cupcake transparent or transparent background. And you'll find a lot of these now that when you click on them, you'll see this kind of patterned looking uh, checkered square that, that shows that that's a transparent option. You know, I just browsed until I found one that I liked uh, in terms of colors and in terms of angle. I wanted one that was slightly above the cupcake, slightly top down. So let's say this is one that I want to use. I go and I click on it and notice that it is a transparent background. I can right click and save the image. So I go back to my flyer here. Let's go ahead and set our background. Now you may be tempted to click the background button and choose your image this way. The problem with this is that you don't really get to choose how the image is laid out. You don't really get to do any color adjustments or anything else like that to the image uh, and whatever. So I would recommend that you don't do it that way. I would recommend that your background, whether it's a, if you are gonna use an image as a background, that you set it in there as just a basic image. So we're gonna go into insert image and you can upload from your computer or search the web or pull it from Drive. We're gonna pull ours from Drive. So I will find that image there and insert it. It is not exactly the size of the slide, so I will have to stretch it out a bit, that's fine. And it's a little bit of a drab color. I'd like to make it a little bit more rich and brown. So when you select this image, you can go to Format Options and you get a few choices here as to how you format these images. So I might actually have it recolor and ah, look at there, that's a nice brown one. It's actually a sepia tone, but that's fine. If I wanted better precision on this, I could go into Photoshop and do some stuff, but this will be okay for the flyer. And the great thing is I can play around with different backgrounds on this later. So I've got my background and I now want to add like a header of some sort and uh, put a notice up here. Okay, so let's do that again. I'll go to image and from drive and I'll use my paint splatter image and then I'll just drag that up to the top and let's see about resizing that to be a little bit bigger. That's fine. And you can crop these things um, just so that it's nice and clean, but it will not print beyond the slide anyways. So uh, that's fairly safe, but just to make sure it looks kind of nice and tidy there, I can do that. Now I need some fonts. So let's, uh, let's go up here and do a text box. And we're just gonna drag this text box from one end to the other, that way it's gonna be easily centered. So when you go into fonts here, you'll have to then search for a, a decent font. Now you'll have some already built in here, but you can go to more fonts and add more to the list. All these that do not have checks are not in the list. So I can sort fonts by going up here to all fonts and choose uh, handwriting. I might want the one that looks more handwritten. You know what? Caution script looks pretty good. I think that's I think that's kind of nice. I'll also need one for the main body of the flyer, so let me just keep looking here. Yeah, short stack looks pretty good too. All right, so I'll hit OK. Now I'll come up here and I'm gonna type something. Let's say Portal Elementary Bake Sale. Well, first things first, I need to select it, make it large. Let's go with 72 and let's change that font now. We now have Caution Script and we will change the font color to be a nice white. Yeah, looking better. Centered, bring that down a bit. That's good, but it doesn't really pop. It doesn't stand out enough. So I need to select this um, and make some changes to it. So you select the text box and then you can go down here and go to format options. And if you don't see it up at the top here, you just have to pull this the three dots down and you'll see it. And you can add the reflection, you can add a drop shadow. So let's try that out. What does a reflection look like? 
Ah, uh, interesting, but not useful for this case, but file that away for later. A drop shadow, yeah, yeah, it stands out a little bit more. Let's expand this and control this. So maybe we want it less transparent so it stands out even more there, and we want to increase the blur radius a bit. Okay, so let's take a better look at that. So let's go with, um, let's just go zoom in a little bit here. There, now we can see that a little bit better. Yeah, yeah, I like that drop shadow. That, that stands out pretty good. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is get a graphic on here, maybe the date. So this time we're going to try something a little different. We're going to go to Explore, and we're going to search here uh, using the internal search option inside Slides. So we'll do a search for Cupcake Transparent. We're going to go to Images, and we see a few here, but they look a lot like clip art. There's a few of them that look more realistic, and some of them that are just not transparent at all. So why is this different than the Google image search we did before? Well, that's because these are all labeled for reuse and even commercial purposes. The big thing is that Google Slides really doesn't know what you're going to be using this for, and so they default to commercial use uh, as, a, as the copyright option. Now, if you're doing this for a classroom thing, a little flyer you're doing inside the classroom, you actually have fair use kind of behind you on that. Once this hits the public, though, you got a different problem. Or if you're doing this for commercial reasons, you got a different problem. So in that case, you might find that for a flyer that's going out for a bake sale, you need to be a bit more stringent than the one that you might be making as a student in a classroom. So let's choose this one. Um, this is a pretty nice one, actually. And we're just going to go and insert this image here. But the big thing you need to understand is that wherever you get your images from, you need to be a little bit careful about copyright. And, um, you know, in general, you need to just be sure that you have the rights to do that. The good thing about using this inside Google Slides is that you're going to be guaranteed that these are free of copyright restrictions. But I will incorporate both um, into our, our design here. So I'm going to insert a shape and I'll use a circle. And in order to make it be a circle and not an oval, you can hold down the shift key and it forces it to lock the ratio of height and width. So let's do that. And I'd like it to be about the same color as one of these, uh, one of these cupcakes. So I might want to use maybe this brown or that orange. That's a nice orange and it stands out. So let's try to get a similar orange. That's pretty good. If I'm going to use this cupcake, I will use that kind of orange. You can apply a border color just by clicking on that and choosing the color you'd like it to be, and then you can apply the size of that. So that border color, I might make a nice dark brown to kind of fit the rest of this. Yeah, looks good. Let's zoom in a little bit. And then I want text on there. Now you can just double click it and add text, but you don't really get a lot of control over the text that way. So I personally like to actually just get a text box and then uh, choose a font. Now this needs to be fairly readable and it probably needs to be less stylized so that people can easily uh, identify it. So in this case, I may choose a different font. So let's go with something pretty simple. Verdana is not a bad one. Ubuntu is not a bad one. And let's just type in Saturday, June 16th, 2018. Say so it's this Saturday. Go here, center it, make that nice. Uh, let's go with white, bold it, and let's get a little larger, a little too big there. Scale it back a bit. Oh, that's actually pretty good. So we then have to place this basically on there and line it up as best as we can with the circle. You can use the arrow keys on your keyboard to kind of do fine tuning and fine adjustments. And we might want to bring that in just a bit there. It's actually pretty good. Again, I might want to add a shadow to this to make it kind of pop a bit. So I'll go to format options, <laughs> make it pop. That's a funny, uh, that's a funny inside joke with designers. People always want us to make it pop. All right, so that's actually pretty good. Yeah, I increase the blur radius just a bit, or maybe not at all, maybe very, maybe very little. We just want it to have a slight edge to it. Let's zoom out. Yeah, pretty good. All right, so to group these so that they don't separate, you want to select one, then select the other while you're holding down the shift key. Then you can go in here, right click on them and choose group. The great thing is that when I select one, I select both. And so if I just click and move, I will be fine. Now, if I want to separate them, I can keep on clicking and then select individual ones. Okay, so we're gonna um, get rid of this cupcake for now, put the other one in there, and we can choose to have this in front or behind it. You can adjust what is what the order of the, the, the vertical order, this, what they call the Z order, just by right clicking on something and choosing order and say, all right, let's send this one backward. And so it's behind it, or we can go here and say order, bring to the front, and that goes in front of everything. And it looks kind of cool. Okay, now I need to put some text at the bottom. So let's go down here and put a little text box. I'll put it all the way across the width, and I will use that font, uh, short stack for this, which I'll be using for all the rest of it. 
and uh, let's go with the let's go with that nice little orange that we're already using. See if it stands out. And I'm gonna put proceeds to benefit the school library. I'm sure they'd like that. I will center this. I will make it a little larger. Again, we want to select the whole box before we do that. It may not be bright enough, so we'll play around with that a little bit. I might go with this kind of yellow-orange there. That stands out a little bit more. But even then, it still doesn't quite pop enough, and it's hard to see. So what we need to do is come in here to Shapes, and let's add a shape. It's actually going to be behind the text, and we're going to make it black. And actually, we're going to go down here to Custom, because we need to affect the transparency. If you go down to Custom, you can adjust the transparency here. This is that second bar you can see the checkered thing, which is this universal sign of transparency. Make it about 50% transparent. But the only problem is it seems to be washing out that text. Well, that's because it's in front of it. So you want to right click on this, go to order and send backwards. Aha, now that kind of, yeah, that kind of looks pretty good. Let me adjust that a little bit, maybe make it a little darker. And you can just keep playing with this until you get it right. Yeah, so that looks pretty good. All right, let's get some text here for what we are going to be selling. And in this case, I'd like to maybe um, go halfway across with this text box and because um, I want two columns. So I'll basically, I just go halfway. Now, if you're having a hard time guesstimating, you can kind of see the little red lines here and there wherever it's suggesting some things, but they can get a little confusing. You might just want to go to view and show guides. Guides will start at 50% vertical and, and horizontal, so it makes it a lot easier. So I come in here and I'm going to set that also to short stack. And this time I think I'm going to use a different color. I'm going to use that nice white cream color uh, to kind of offset some of this. Let's go there and find one that's kind of close. Maybe this. We'll see. Let's try that. And let's increase our size. And let's put some bullets. And we're just going to add some of the items that we're going to be selling. Cupcakes. Cookies. Brownies. That well, looks actually pretty good. And then I can just copy and paste this box to create a duplicate box and then just go in there and change the text. So cakes. There we go. A nice earthy tone, a nice uh, orange and kind of cream colored stuff and some browns. Looks good. And this adds a splash of color and playfulness to it. And we're pretty much done. This is our flyer. Now, if we want to iterate, we can do some interesting things. You can go over here and uh, I just hit control D, but you can right click and duplicate this slide. And so we can then say, okay, let's try a couple of other different things here. We come in here and we, uh, we insert that image uh, from drive of that other cupcake we, we wanted. And with this cupcake, maybe at this point we say, okay, now I want to change some colors. I can come in here and say, okay, this is actually a nice yellow to match the yellow in the cupcake. Let's change the, the, the font and go with a pink font so that it matches the pink on the cupcake. Yeah, there we go. That's a nicer, nicer, more saturated color. And this can stay the same, except this can probably go a little lighter to match the yellow. Great, so now we've got the color scheme matching with that one. We got going here. Maybe we change the background on this one. So in this case, um, I might get rid of that and let's let's search for a background that is copyright friendly. Wooden table, wooden table texture. Let's try that. Go to images. Yeah, they've got a few of them actually. I might go something like this. We'll see what that looks like. Right, and maybe we want it oriented the other way so that we can, yeah, see the, the boards a little bit better across there. Move this down. Now you're covering up everything, but that's okay, because all I have to do now is take it, there we go, and right click, order, send to back. That puts it at the very back. Then you want to uh, crop it to fit the, the slide size. Hit the crop tool, go there, that's good. So that's our other option. Um, there's this one, and then there's this one. We send both of these to the client or whoever uh, is in charge of this, and um, and we're, we're good to go. And that's it. That's how you make a flyer in Google Slides. At this point, you can go down to File, and you can just download this as a PDF, or you can print directly. All right, I hope you all enjoyed this video, and I hope you found it useful. And if you did, go ahead and click that Like button. Heck, why not support us and click that Subscribe button. Leave a comment or an idea for a Tech Tuesday video below. Share this video with your friends, and we will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.